Hi, uh, my name's Michelle. I work for Helen Sanderson Associates and today I'm going to be talking to you about Planning Live. So let's start by thinking about what is it? What is Planning Live? Planning Live um, is aimed at people who have an indicative allocation and because of that they want to develop their support plan. This usually happens by pulling a team of people who know and care about the person around them and this could include family members, circle members, professional people, perhaps people who are paid to give them support currently, advocates, whoever it is that you need to bring around you to capture really rich information. We would usually do a planning live workshop for up to four to six people and this would take place over a couple of days. Within the two days, we would be using the principles of person-centered thinking to capture rich information and information that fits within the best practice criteria for developing a support plan and helps us to think about how you're going to be using your allocation. Within that two days, while we're using person-centered thinking, we use the working not working tool to do a good current reality analysis of what's uh, working and working in your life now. This then ultimately leads to us thinking about your outcomes and actions for your future. One of the things that we pay particular attention to within Planning Live is figuring out what your perfect week would look like. And by perfect week, um, we think about what matters to you most um, from a worth getting up in the morning for, what makes life worth living, to how do we keep you healthy and safe within that. So it's a perfect balanced week that we're thinking about. Some of the tools that we use to think about that are the relationship circle and thinking about your connections so that we can then make sure that when we're developing a perfect week, we're thinking about people who are important to you or you would like to be important to you in the future. We also look at your community, so we would develop a community map to help think about places that you want to um, spend your perfect week in as well. We help you to develop some outcomes that we can move towards and we tend to think about, so it, within a year, what would you like to change or achieve and how could we put that within your perfect week. Um, we then look at your allocation and think about how can we cost your perfect week. Now, not all of your perfect week will require cost because you may have resources um, that are unpaid or natural that help us think about your perfect week. When would you use Planning Live? Um, there are a couple of uh, options for using Planning Live. You might be an individual who wants to develop a support plan. Um, but you might prefer to do that with that team of people who know and care about you in a group with other individuals who also want to develop their support plan. How you could also use this is if you are somebody who lives in shared accommodation or shares your support currently, it's a great way to come together and all plan together, figure out what the shared and background hours are, but also clarify what your in your control hours are and ensure that we get those in the perfect week and plan uh, towards having that as well. The benefits of using Planning Live above other support planning options, and there are other support planning options, is that it gives you an opportunity to share ideas and experiences with others who are in the same situation as you. Um, other benefits are that you get to learn from other people's experiences and you can build on those. Um, you can use their ideas as well as your own as well. Everybody gets the same information at the same time. Um, so everybody's on the same page throughout the two day workshop. And usually planning live is best when it's facilitated independently. Uh, and an independent facilitator might be somebody who's completely um, removed from your organization, or it might be somebody who's part of the organization, but not necessarily linked to you or the service. Um, the, the benefits of this is that you get um, a degree of challenge that you otherwise wouldn't have within that. You can um, challenge limiting assumptions you can ask those questions that other people think they already know the answers to in a way that feels quite safe and um, you can also make sure that you're checking out with the person is this right all the way through because you don't know them that well. Some top tips if you're going to be using planning live would be um, think about preparation, good preparations are must. So planning the logistics, making sure that people can get there on time, that we've got refreshments, etc., that make a good welcoming environment for the person. Um, if staff people are coming, making sure that they're rotated on accordingly, not having a staff change over halfway through the day. So all the practical things. Um, we need to think about the setting and the environment, make sure that's right so that it's conducive to great thinking together and great planning together so we can really look forward and uh, design your perfect week. 
and we need to plan to ensure that people give their best contribution on the day as well. So some people might need some help thinking about what visually might they want to see within the room or how might they want to put across their information as well. And crucially, everybody coming to Planning Live needs to be clear beforehand what their role is. Is that to contribute to the gathering of information? Is that to help when actions come up and we go forward and take them away? Or is that to record information? Um, so there are kind of three elements to it. There's the preparation element to Planning Live. There's the what happens during the workshops. And there's the what happens after when we really make sure we've pulled all the information together to create a, a robust support plan. Mm -hmm.